My buddy Jake loved hiking and convinced me to join him for a weekend camping trip deep in the woods. I thought it would be a nice break from the routine. Little did I know it would change my life forever. We set up camp near a remote lake, miles away from civilization. The full moon illuminated the forest as night fell, casting eerie shadows everywhere. We gathered around the campfire, telling ghost stories and laughing, but around midnight something felt off. The laughter died down and an uneasy silence settled over us. Did you hear that? Jake whispered. A low, guttural growl echoed through the trees. My heart began to race. We dismissed it as an animal, but the sound grew louder closer. I grabbed a flashlight and shone it into the darkness, but saw nothing. Then we heard it again, accompanied by the snapping of twigs and rustling leaves. It was moving closer. My flashlight flickered, casting eerie shadows that played tricks on my eyes. Suddenly Jake screamed and pointed. Just beyond the edge of the light was a pair of glowing eyes staring at us. We froze in terror as the creature stepped into view. It was massive, covered in matted fur, with long, sharp claws and a snout filled with razor-sharp teeth. The beast snarled, its eyes reflecting a predatory hunger. It was a werewolf, and it was hunting us. Jake grabbed a burning stick from the fire and waved it at the creature, trying to scare it off. It hesitated for a moment but then lunged at him with incredible speed. Jake's scream was cut short as the creature's claws tore through him. Blood sprayed everywhere, and I stumbled back, horrified. I turned and ran, my heart pounding in my chest. I could hear the werewolf chasing me, its heavy footsteps thudding against the forest floor. I tripped and fell, the flashlight flying from my hand. Darkness enveloped me, and I felt a searing pain as the creature's claws raked across my back. Somehow, adrenaline kicked in, and I scrambled to my feet and kept running. I didn't stop until I burst out of the trees and onto a dirt road. There I collapsed, gasping for breath, blood dripping from my wounds. I looked back expecting the creature to be right behind me, but it was gone. A passing car found me and took me to the nearest hospital. The doctors were baffled by my injuries, but they stitched me up and sent me on my way. I told them it was a bear attack, but I knew the truth. Weeks passed, and I struggled to forget the nightmare but every full moon brought back the pain and an inexplicable primal urge. As the moon rose high one night, my body changed, bones snapping, fur sprouting, and I became the monster. Terrified of harming others, I hid away during full moons, knowing now the legends were absolute. Overcome with dread, I researched obsessively for a cure, finding only dead ends. Nightmares plagued me, and with the next full moon approaching, I isolated myself in a remote cabin hoping to prevent any harm. The transformation was agony, and I lost all sense of humanity, becoming the beast. I roamed the forest, driven by primal instincts. The scent of deer caught my attention, and I gave chase, reveling in the thrill of the hunt. My claws tore through flesh, and the taste of blood was intoxicating. In those moments, I felt mighty invincible. But as dawn approached and the transformation reversed, horror and guilt washed over me. I stumbled back to the cabin, covered in blood, the remnants of my prey scattered around me. I spent the day in a daze, haunted by what I had done. I knew I couldn't keep doing this. I needed to find a solution, or I would end up hurting someone innocent. Desperation led me to seek out anyone who might be able to help. I found an old reclusive woman named Agatha, rumored to be knowledgeable in ancient curses and dark magic. Her cottage was deep in the woods, surrounded by protective charms and symbols. She listened to my story without judgment and agreed to help, but warned me that the path would be dangerous and uncertain. Agatha performed a temporary ritual to suppress the curse, giving me a few weeks of reprieve. I researched werewolf lore during this time, hoping to find a permanent solution. Agatha taught me the balance between light and darkness and the importance of facing my inner demons, but the curse was more substantial than I had anticipated. The full moon approached again and I could feel the change coming. Agatha gave me a pendant enchanted to help me retain some control during the transformation. It was a slim hope, but I clung to it desperately. The night of the full moon, I locked myself in the cabin, clutching the pendant tightly. The transformation was as painful as ever, but I managed to keep a fragment of my humanity this time. The beast roared within me, but I fought to stay in control. I ventured into the woods to an ancient forgotten temple, guided by the pendant's magic. I found symbols and relics, revealing an ancient pact, 
and the curse inside. In the heart of the temple, I confronted the powerful spirit of the original werewolf, who taunted me. With Agatha's teachings and the pendant strength, I weakened the spirit and shattered the relic, binding it and breaking the curse. Exhausted but free, I emerged into the full moon's light, now a reminder of triumph, not terror. I returned to Agatha, who reminded me that darkness would always be part of me, but I had proven I could overcome it. Grateful, I thanked her, knowing I owed her my life. In the months that followed, I tried to rebuild my life. The scars of that night remained, both physical and emotional, but I felt more vital for having faced them. I kept the pendant as a reminder of my journey, symbolizing the battle I had fought and won. The legends of werewolves are absolute, and I am living proof, but I am also proof that we can overcome the darkness within us and find strength in the most unlikely places. The night may hold its terrors, but the dawn always follows, promising a new beginning.